introduce to you the features and the technologies behind iPhone and iPod. And uh, we'll first talk about the mobile phone trend and then the music player trend and explain to you the unique features about iPhone and then the technology behind them. Well, actually, uh, here is the mobile phone trend from the first generation, which used analog transmission, and then the second generation to digital trans transmission. Uh, we are actually in the middle of 3G and 4G. So for the first generation, uh, as I have said before, it used analog transmission and uh, as well as portable cell sets. And for the second generation, the new features include the uh, ability to send SMS and as well as phone to network signal. And the major difference between first generation and second generation phone is that um, second generation phone is actually using digital transmission instead of an analog. And for the third generation, there is an introduction of high-speed IP data networks and a packet switching for data transmission. And more importantly to the users, there is a color screen. So for the 4G, where are we heading? We are actually heading to a IMAX standard, which is a standard for wireless uh, Wi-Fi, <laughs> also an LTE standard, and the elimination of circuit switching, a new form of uh, packet switching over the internet. So I think it stands for worldwide interoperable <laughs> mobile access something. Very well. Tell you more about the music players. As you all know, the personal music players have changed a lot over the past few decades. From the beginning, we have the Walkman, and now we have these uh, very fancy iPod players. So let me talk about the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, the Walkman it plays these cassette tapes, and uh, the cassette tapes is actually uh, record sound by having an impression of an electromagnetic signal onto their ferric oxide coating on the tape. And then when it is played, it will, uh, the cassette player will convert these, uh, these signals into amplified audio sound. And as for a CD player, it, is, it plays a compact disc and it has uh, no moving parts on the CD. It's actually a plastic disc and it has an aluminum coating and which is burned by a laser to create these ridges of ones and zeros. And then the CD player will read these ones and zeros and have output of uh, into voltages and sent to the speaker where sound is generated. And then next we have a very quite unsuccessful MD player and MD MD discs, which is mini discs, which are the si its size is smaller than the CDs. However, the the length of songs it holds is the same. This is because of some uh, compression technology, and here it uses the ad rack. Uh, standing for Adaptive Transform Acoustic Coding Technology, which can reduce the uh, file size to around one fifth of it while, pres while preserving most of the quality. And then as for MP3s, it is completely digital and it can compress these music into much smaller sizes than CDs, up to one tenth or one fourteenth of its actual size. And how it does that is actually takes the characteristics of the human ear. Because the human ear as you can see here, some sounds can't be he heard, and some sounds can be heard better, and the louder sound will be heard. So it uses these qualities to make the music uh, much smaller in size, and taking out these useless information. And for MP3s, the quality is determined by the bitrate. And the higher the bitrate, the better the quality. And it ranges from around 96 kilobytes per <coughs> second, to 320 kilobytes per second. But some people still argue that even the highest bit rate is still inferior to the quality in a CD. And it has no moving parts, and its memory is usually using flash memory, like an iPhone, or uses some hard drives, or mini hard drive, like in iPods. And now there's these MP4 players, which are actually uh, quite new in technology. It, is quite common now because it can play video, audio, and have subtitles, and it can also have images like the big iPods now. And um, it 
it's usually bigger in size because the screen is, uh, needs to be bigger to play the videos. And also the hard drive is also uh, needs to be bigger because these video files are usually bigger in size. Okay. And now we're going to talk a bit about uh, smartphone of iPhone and what actually makes a smartphone. These are actually some of the basic uh, functions or criteria of iPhones. It has an operating system, uh, software, and web access, and QWERTY keyboard messaging. As you can see, like I, you know that iPhone doesn't have a QWERTY keyboard, but it uses a very unique interface. It has a keyboardless uh, screen, which uh, uses touch, touch to uh, input to your commands. And you can type, scroll, and zoom on this keyboard with your fingers. And it's actually very user friendly, and it's very easy for users to learn how to use it. And it has um, uh, lots of features, including videos, cameras, and it has digital compass. And you can cut, copy, and paste on websites, on your SMS. And you can tilt it through the accelerometer. And it has good technology such as the internet tethering, which you can use your iPhone to connect to the internet through the uh, 3G. And also, you can have many user-created applications that you can download onto your phone. Uh, so uh, let me focus on uh, one of the functions, first the touch screen uh, of the uh, iPhone. Uh, so essentially, there are five.